Hi, my name is Philip, and today I'm going to talk about concurrency and random number generation. The general problem is that stochastic processes are a pain. Random number generation is stochastic, and concurrency is stochastic, which means that concurrent random number generation is double plus stochastic. We still want to be able to have repeatability when we rerun a program um, for a given random number seed, but actually dealing with that in a concurrent framework is quite difficult. Um, so the basic tasks we're going to be dealing with today are independent replications of the stochastic process. Um, for this, in mixed models, we use this nice little means function replicate, which until January looked just like this. So for a stochastic function f, it's just called n times. Um, and we're going to be using the Mersenne twister as a random number generator. And we can do simple things like uh, replicate a call to random string six times, and we get six different answers. That's great. Um, of course, for such a simple operation, there are the vectorized forms of these functions in Julia, and that's what we would traditionally use, where this type of replicate operation really comes into being a nice advantage is when we want to replicate these vectorized operations. So for example, if we want to replicate um, 10 times, so we want to do 10 replications of 180 draws from the random number generator, then we can do this, and then we can fit models to these, to these 10 different things. So our columns here are different replications, and then for each column we have 180 observations, and typically we wouldn't just do 100, uh, so 1800 total calls to random number generator, but we'd be fitting models to each of these columns or some type of summary statistic. Um, and so if we want to parallelize that, then we can um, modify our replicate function just a little bit and um, change the, the, the comprehension to a for loop and just use threads.add threads to make this parallel. And um, this actually runs without errors when we turn using threads on. And um, the first value looks the same, so that, that's a good sign. Um, given that this is threaded and the threads might be scheduled differently, we know that the ordering might not be the same. And so if we compare this element-wise to the results of the multi-threaded version to the single-threaded version, well, it's not exactly equal. But somewhat surprisingly, the samples aren't the same. So if we sort the samples and then compare them, um, they're not the same. And so looking a bit closer at the samples um, and sorting them, we see that there can actually be um, quite big um, value differences here. So we're getting, um, we're getting at times things as big as 0.1, and this is really, really surprising at first. But if we think about this, the answer becomes somewhat clearer. And the trick is that random number generation is actually a non-trivial process. So to generate random numbers that have all the properties that we want, or pseudo-random numbers that have all the properties that we want, there's actually a fair amount of computation. And it's not an atomic operation, so it doesn't happen instantaneously. On top of that, it's not re-entrant. Most random number generators are not re-entrant. So if one thread calls the random number generator while it's already busy generating th uh, random numbers for the different thread, um, then it's calling it while it's an inconsistent state, and you'll just get garbage out. Um, and in fact, you'll lose all guarantees about the behavior of the random number generator. So this is actually really bad. Um, so the easy way around this is just to use locks. And so if we do this naively and just lock the entire call to the stochastic function f, um, then we get this, it runs, no errors, and uh, the element-wise comparison is not the same, that's not surprising. Um, but if we sort it, then actually everything works out the same. Unfortunately, this is typically not what you want to do, because um, this coarse grain locking here is losing all advantages to the multi-threading because the entirety of the loop body with the exception of the update um, to the progress meter is in a locking thing. And this creates a bottleneck, this creates a point of contention. And so what you actually want to do is do the locking within that stochastic function f. Um, and this is how we do it in mixed models. So this is our parametric, boot function, uh, parametric bootstrap function. And um, we have a bunch of stuff up front related to pre-allocation and bookkeeping. And then we have this call to replicate. Um, and it is indeed the replicate function I showed you, just not without any locks. And what you see here is that there's a bunch of bookkeeping related to the threads. And then the only part of replicate that uses locks or the, or the replicated function is the call to the actual random number generator, the simulate bit. Everything else is outside the lock, including the fitting of the model. And the idea here is that um, refitting the model should be the dominant part of the computation. That it's much more expensive to fit a model than it is to generate a bunch of random numbers. Um, and this assumption was true for a while, um, but that kind of broke down more recently. So here's an example um, from our test data using sleep study. 
Um, if we do this single threaded, it runs fine. If we do this multi threaded, it runs fine, but takes longer, which is not desirable. Um, and what happened is that the trade off here changed. Um, Doug has been doing some fantastic work on optimizing the fitting of the model. And now the random number generation is actually the bottleneck in this process. And it's also where the threads can, uh, are in contention. And so what's happening is that the boost you get from being able to fit the models in parallel is, is overwhelmed by the contention for the random number generation. And so we need to take a re uh, another look at that and see if we can not optimize that more. Um, watch the space for more detail, maybe at next year's JuliaCon. Um, but the nice thing is about our implementation is that we actually have in our test suite a guarantee that no matter how many threads you use, you'll get the same results. And this is really important. Um, because we're sharing a random number generator and it's using the stream, uh, a single shared stream, um, the samples might not be in the same order, but we actually have an explicit test and explicit guarantee that no matter how many threads you use for a given seed, you will always get the same results. So that's really quite nice. So this brings us to kind of to lessons and tips for other people who want to do this. Um, sharing a random number generator between threads can be quite tricky. Uh, random number generators are in general not re-entrant. And even if we assume that the individual values are produced atomically, the sequence of threads is not guaranteed to be the same across runs. And so um, you also have to have any types of locks dealing with this. Um, be careful of the fact that um, if you don't lock appropriately, then the, the streams are spread out across multiple uh, things. For example, um, instead of having our discrete columns in the original thing I had, you can have that the values are spread across the diagonals of the columns instead of in the columns. So locks are one good solution for dealing with this. Um, locking just during a number generator itself um, and not the computations that build upon it is the necessary thing. Otherwise, you lose all the advantages of threading. All random number generation for a given stochastic function should be performed at once. Even if some of the results aren't used until later, this avoids the striping issue. Um, this approach can also be extended to using distributed multiprocessing, but the shared objects are somewhat tr trickier. The really big advantage of this approach is that it yields the same results regardless of the number of threads, but it relies on the assumption that the random number generation is a small part of the total computation, which as you saw is no longer the case for parts of mixed models. Um, and one other thing we learned the hard way when we were implementing this is that you need to be very careful when sharing objects between threads that do operations in place. All of the fitting in mixed models is done in place. And there were some interesting errors at first, but that's why we have a deep copy operation now where we copy the model. So each thread has its own uh, copy to work with. Finally, um, I want to mention that this work was supported by the Center for Interdisciplinary Research Bielefeld. Um, they have been a great host of the mixed models team on multiple occasions. Thank you so much for your time.